Hello, I'm Michael Fasani, and I'm going to teach you how to use the Crop Tool in Adobe Photoshop Creative Cloud. So the Crop Tool can be used for either recomposing your images after you've taken them from a camera, or maybe you're creating artwork for social media. For example, YouTube will tell you that the, the header banner image has to be a certain size, or Twitter will tell you that your profile image has to be a certain size. It will say it has to be 300 pixels by 300 pixels, or 700 pixels by 400 pixels, and you try to upload an image. You need to upload an image which has been cropped in the right way. So the Crop Tool actually changed I think it was in uh, CS5 or 6 and I'll basically show you how to access the old crop tool first of all so you can know the history of Photoshop and see how that happened. So if you click this cog here and you go to the settings and you click use classic mode and in classic mode you used to sort of drag and crop and then you used to move your cropping area around your image and then when you're ready you would just hit enter and it will crop the image. Okay, So I press ctrl Z and we go back to the original image. So to get to your cropping tool you can press C and it will highlight your crop tool here in your toolbar. Okay. So in your option bar we will untick classic mode and now we see how the crop tool works in Adobe Creative Cloud. And they've sort of added some new features and they've changed a few things. But effectively now you have these handles on your image and when you drag the handles in the crop stays in the middle of the screen and the image that you're moving or cropping away turns grey and the grey area represents what you're sort of getting rid of and the light area represents what you're keeping and what you're going to see. Okay, so if we're happy with this crop now, we'll press enter. Okay, so this is the new crop and I just want to show you something else. You have a checkbox here that says delete cropped pixels and if you look at this layer, it looks like a, a normal layer now. Okay, but the guys did something quite cool with the cropping tool, and now I'll press Ctrl Z again and we'll go back to our original image. This time, I will untick delete cropped pixels, and what this basically means is I can crop my image now, I can work on it, and later on I can recrop it, I can change it, I can make it bigger, and I can get back those lost pixels, so you can crop the image in a non-destructive way. So this is a really cool introduction to Photoshop. So let me just show you how this works. Now we, uh, we have this crop like we had before okay and we're gonna create a crop like so now just before I click this tick button I want you to see that we now have this sort of cropping uh, visual indication on our layer okay now what that basically means is this layer is now like a smart cropped layer which means that I can actually come back to this layer and actually get back stuff that used to be there okay you see that I'm actually now bringing stuff back to my image okay so then I click enter and now this is the crop that I have okay and if you keep this unchecked you will always be able to recrop your image back to a, a bigger size so I'm just gonna go back to the original photo and show you something else so a new tool that they've added as well is this straighten button okay and to base it says here when you hover it it says straighten the image by drawing a line on it it's quite simple now what that will basically do is it will create the tightest crop possible whilst straightening an image if for example here his arms if I wanted his arms to be horizontal I could just click from one arm to the other arm and then it will show me a crop which works with that idea okay so now his arms are straight but in order to do that I have to lose all of these sort of grey areas okay so that's the straighten tool and you can see that's how that works Now the next thing I want to show you is the presets we have some options where we can basically choose and we can also create our own but for example maybe we want to create a standard size 8 by 10 photo I can click on this option and it pre-populates some things up here okay so this is going to use um, a width a height and a resolution it's going to make this image 8 inches by 10 inches at 300 pixels per inch and PPI uh, translates also to DPI for printers and, and so on so if you crop a picture at 300 PPI and then you print it at 300 DPI they're going to match and you're going to get pretty good results out of your computer so if I now crop this image you can see that it's giving me a bounding box which is a set size and I have to sort of keep this ratio okay and you can see that, that it just swaps from uh, horizontal to vertical depending on the way you drag the box it will give you a different 
um, either vertical or horizontal crop but this crop is now 10 inches by 8 inches at 300 ppi if I press enter it will resize and do everything and I know that this image is now going to print out well on my printer so again I'm just going to go back to the original image I'm going to show you what some of these uh, boxes where they filled this stuff in for us okay so clicking here we can create select presets and clicking here we can choose manual options okay so we have basically ratio or we have uh, pixel dimensions so ratio we can use for things like um, a film for example a film is a 16 by 9 is a widescreen film and maybe we want to create a graphic for that film we can choose 16 by 9 as the ratio and then it creates a bounding box which works for a 16 by 9 size image okay so that's what I mean when I talk about ratio okay so to create something for YouTube or Twitter um, we would choose width by height by resolution okay and when you're uploading images to the internet the the PPI or the DPI is not so important it's more about the actual pixel size so you can write in here for example 600 pixels by 600 pixels okay so if someone tells you you need to create an image which is 600 pixels by 600 pixels and they don't specify a PPI then you just just do it like so so this effectively creates a square we click tick and it's basically created a 600 by 600 pixel image so there's two final things that I want to show you you have a clear button here which you can click which will basically delete any content that you've put in these boxes um, you have a pixels by centimeter or pixels per inch depending on uh, the way in which you're cropping your image so I also earlier on explained what this tick does it basically saves that your crop the other thing that you have here is you have your cancel your crop so for example if you click this it will reset the crop and the final thing that you have here after you've made some changes maybe you twist like this um, and instead of just sort of cancelling or, or ticking you can just sort of reset okay so reset is a little bit like cancelling except for it keeps you in the process of cropping the last thing I want to show you is this uh, view overlay button here where basically you can lay different views over your crop for example you have a golden spiral if you google some photography topics you'll learn more about the golden spiral or the rule of thirds the cool thing here that I really want to show you is this cycle overlay so you can just click zero whilst you're in this mode and see the different uh, view options appearing in front of you and it's just an easy way to get through the different views from from what's within this menu drop down okay typically I use this uh, rule of thirds I like to keep it on here I can make my crops change my DPI and press this tick button so that's basically the end of the cropping tool I like to go into as much detail as possible with each of the tools that I do on my channel so if you like this video please hit the subscribe button and give me a thumbs up if you dislike the video give me a thumbs down if there's anything that you think that I missed or anything that you didn't understand please just leave me a comment and I will get back to you thanks for watching